So, guys, this is Panu. He's a developer on the, one of my teams uh, working with me on um, NHA. Um, and he's going to talk a little bit today about um, Swagger and some of the work we've been doing with uh, code generation. So, thanks, Joe. Hi, everyone. My name is Panu. I'm a full stack web developer for NHA team. So, actually, I work for Goda over two years. So I used to work for hotel team before, but right now I work with the uh, NHA team, the front end part. So, so what NHA? It's like a non-hotel accommodation. <laughs> yeah, basically like Airbnb. Yeah. So what I would like to talk today is about Swagger host generation for React. Let's talk about technology that we are using. We use Swagger. Anyone <coughs> use Swagger before? So Swagger is the open source library that help you design, build, document, and then consume your RESTful API. And we use Swash Swagger. It's like a new Git library that you can just use Swagger attribute in your code. And also we use Autorest. Autorest is like a library, uh, it's a tool that used to generate the high-end library for your REST REST service. And then we have TypeScript and we use React to build a single page application. So what is Swagger? So actually I have one example that easy to understand. Actually, for example, if you are like a pet owner store and you build the API, so you have like a endpoint called like add new pet into, into the store, which is post request. So when you develop your code in the back end part, and then you don't need to do anything. If you use Swagger, it helps you to turn your back end code into the document in the JSON format. So it saves a lot of time. And it also tell you what parameter that, going to, that you're going to use and also the list point. So once you modify it and then you generate record again, it will automatically update it. So you have a lot of endpoints like add a pet store, you know, update existing pet or file pet. So this is the architecture that we are using. Okay, so we have a web API and we use wash factor. And it will turn your web API endpoint into the document in JSON format. Let's talk a bit about the wash factor. So actually there are two parts. If you build the web API on the back end side, and then you would like to expose your model into the uh, client size kit like React. So the first part is a model. Let's say you have the, this is the basic PHP model, contain two properties. You, if you use Wacker, you generate your code into the JSON format. And also the API client. You can see the Swagger visible attribute at second line. That means if you add this attribute, so the Swagger will know that, okay, you would like to export this into the document. And then you can define the Swagger operation and, and the list form. So once you have the uh, document in the JSON format, we use gov.js to generate by using AutoRest code generator. So we have two parts, right? We have model and client API import. So in AutoRest, what we do is like we fork the AutoRest library from the open source and then we add the ability to export like a TypeScript. And then you can use it, you know, on AngularJS or on any uh, JavaScript MVP framework that uses TypeScript. So in this page is one of our examples about the model template. So whatever model that you have on your backend API, it will 
convert to the Thai speed by using the template. We also have client endpoint template as well. So whatever asynchronous request API, it will turn into your Thai speed. So once you got the JSON format in a module, after you run the authorized code generator, you will get the TypeScript, which is the interface, the one that you can use in the React application. And also the client endpoint is a single way. So basically, when you work on API stuff, and then some people may work on you know, React, and then when you modify some API, it's automatically updated. So you don't need to like go back and forth update. So it saves us a ton of time. So just want to recap, we have a web API and we use watch buckle. We generate the JSON file as a document for your RESTful API. After that, we use gut.js to generate by using auto REST. So we have models and client endpoints. And finally, we get the TypeScript, the one that we can use in React. And right now, we already released our auto list version. So this is the URL. Feel free to use it. We'd love to hear some feedback. That's all for my presentation. Any questions? Why not using uh, salt? Hmm? Yes. Yeah, because uh, uh, the, the reason behind uh, the, the main concept of, of REST is to um, you know, uh, make uh, us not as uh, just um, to allow uh, our end user of the REST API to uh, just use as less as possible of the, of the data in, in the client. End. But uh, in that case, uh, I know it might be a little bit helpful for the development of the services, um, but uh, you are a little bit overkill for you know, a front-end application. You're talking about SOAP? No, I, I'm talking about uh, auto-generating uh, client uh, authors, auto-generation of the client. So it is like convert from your backend API into the the, the the TypeScript as well, or you talking yeah, because, about because uh, uh, writing such clients for a developer is takes uh, um, doesn't take so much time. Is that is it uh, help, very helpful in your project? Yeah, I, I <coughs> never use that. Maybe we can try. Yeah. So so can we do and the the uh, Swagger is pretty much the same concept. So we have some sort of uh, service document which describes uh, how to use your services, what type of uh, types and models you have. So Weasel and uh, the Swagger are pretty much uh, the same same approach. Mm -hmm. And uh, also generating the, the client library from uh, your C sharp code is actually not a waste of time because Synchronizing changes between your uh, C sharp models and the uh, TypeScript models takes a lot of time. So you actually have to be super careful about if you change one property that uh, it must be a TypeScript TypeScript model as well. So it actually adds a lot of time and it kind of compounds at at up. So every time you make a change, you have to spend uh, a couple of hours to synchronize everything, test everything. So code generation simplifies actually cuts out all, all of that. Uh, you make a change in C sharp, and from that uh, you can get generate uh, all your models as well as uh, the client itself. So it seems to simply work pretty well for us so far, and uh, it actually saves a lot of time. But uh, uh, if you want, I can show you. But it's the same approach. So. You could actually go the other way around. You could say that uh, you are an old school uh, schema first guy, and you could uh, start with the uh, Swagger. So you could just using Swagger JSON, you could write uh, the service document first. And if you want to use code generation, you could generate your uh, 
skeleton uh, on, on Earth on there. It is just uh, it is a design decision for us that we did the Earth in Chernik at the Kinko C sharp. So we start from right on the Verity Accord and from there to generate everything else. But uh, depending on your approach, whether you like the uh, scheme of Earth or not, uh, you can start with the document as well. So this approach is exactly the same as uh, the implement uh, scheme of Earth. So uh, I see that you are using a lot of open source libraries. So I'd like to know uh, uh, who makes the decisions of uh, which library to use, say there are multiple libraries that each team like decide what they want to use and just use it, or does it come from architecture or something like that? Actually, we did a lot of research. Like when we start try to use the single page application. So we have like a big meeting in the front end team. So we decide, so like each team come up with the idea, right? So we have a Vue.js, we have a React and AngularJS. So each team will do our own like a simple version of single page application by using JavaScript framework. And then we have another meeting like two weeks later. And then we discuss like, okay, is it work for us or not? Because sometimes, you know, like some library might be heavier and might be not fit for us. So we, we decide based on uh, proof of concept that we did and then from the experiment. And so the teacher team sit together and decide? Yeah, of course we did, yeah. So say you want, say you want to introduce a smaller library, uh, can you just do that, or do you need to go through the same process? We, we can do that. I think every developer in Okoda can introduce a new thing. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any future plan to do that from, so it's basically a server to client side, yeah. and it would be reverse, client side to server side, like GraphQL or something? Uh, Maybe do you know you can take this one? No, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> there is a reason. There is a reason for it. Okay, so GraphQL uh, assumes that you have uh, some sort of object overhang or something like that. Uh, so you have pre-access to the database, and you can uh, maybe convert your GraphQL into some SQL statement set of things. And uh, we don't have that uh, freedom because uh, we try not to uh, directly generate the values. Uh, uh, it is really hard to measure the performance of it. So we uh, our approach is to use uh, special features because special features can be benchmarked and tested in algorithm. And uh, using any type of ORM is kind of uh, difficult to test out because uh, we didn't need to figure out uh, it, it generates a SQL on the fly, so it is kind of difficult to figure out uh, how slow our test is. Any questions? Okay, thank you.